Hey, welcome everybody. This is TJ with ShopBot Tools. Today we are going to look into cutting and creating CNC signs. And as broad as a topic that can be, uh, this could be several trainings and it will be split into. But today we're going to go ahead and just show you several different techniques for getting started, both in the software for designing and out on the machine itself for cutting. So let's start, let's start right into this. So let's get started. CNC signs. So material wise, when you're getting into creating signs, you got to know the application is what it comes down to where you're going to be using this. Is this inside? Is this outside? Uh, really, whatever you can cut on the shop bot, it's your woods, your plastics, your non-ferrous metals that can be created into a sign. Some signs have text, some signs are clip art, some signs are nothing more than just a picture. So we'll look at several different signs in today's training out of these different types of materials. The one you can see up here that our very own Buddy Warner cut <clears throat> was cut out of PVC board on his 5x10 older PRT machine. Down on the bottom, this was a, a smoked acrylic that was cut on a current PRS for a fire department. This was sent in by one of our customers here of a foam board sign that was cut. And what I'd like to show you here is some of the features that we'll be adding in today's training. And that's where we can add textures with the software, uh, decorative borders, bringing in clip art. And what's neat about doing this in this CNC world is being able to personalize and customize each one of these signs. We'll look at working with different types of text where we'll V-carve it into a material and we'll also do a raise text where it will be sticking up out of an existing cut and we'll also look at how you can add fonts some computers only have a library of a certain amount of fonts and you can go online or different sources and find different fonts that you may want to use for the sign that you're creating and that can be added in and brought into your Vectrix software and created into your sign Displaying signs we'll also look into. Is this something that's going to go up high, like these signs on the left that are up high in a restaurant? Or is this something that's going to be up close within a foot or two of where the person is standing and seeing? So we'll look at setting up detail in the sign. Um, you know, the, the more the detail that shows, the longer it's going to take to cut. And we'll look into where the sign is actually going to be displayed. And finishing techniques, you know, that would be a category that we would look right into its very own training as far as different techniques and tips. Show you a couple different ones, but really the best thing to do is I'd get recommend you get out on our ShopBot forum and look at a lot of the people out there that are already creating signs and a lot of the techniques that they're using for taping off and spraying and doing different finishing techniques on their signs. So these are some of the examples of signs that we're going to look at from start to finish as far as looking at the file, how they were set up, and then what they look like cut out on the machine. For our first example, we're going to look at a 34-inch round sign. And this is a barbecue company in northern Michigan called Pigs Eating Ribs. And for this example, the font was brought in and the logo was brought in to the circular piece of material. So what we have here was our 34 inch circle. We had imported in a font and did a trace of that vector logo and the font was brought in. Uh, to do this one here we're going to look at wrapping the font to a circle and then we're going to look at different options for tool pathing this. And when I get into the tool pathing, we'll talk about having a wide V-carve versus a skinny V-carve and look at different depths. So to start something out like this, we would have, you could go in here and create an arc and do the, uh, create an arc with the, the font or along the curve. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, move this down in here manually and go ahead here with the edit text spacing and curve where I click on this. I can edit my text spacing and I can kind of move this and shape this and get it just proportionally. I'm just looking for borders here. I'll zoom in with my mouse and I'm just looking to have the same approximate spacing along the edge between the different letters. 
So again, I could have went ahead and draw an arc and get it perfect, but for what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and just select this, center it, and I don't want it centered in the material. I just want it centered left and right. So I'll go ahead and put it like that. And that shows the example of how I would have gotten to this. So for tool pathing this one, notice that there would be two different types of tool paths. There's one for the font and there's one for the logo. And the reason for this is the font is a very wide font where the logo itself has very skinny vectors that are parallel to each other. So first let's look through these. The First the v-carve of the font is just a v-carve engraving toolpath using the 60 degree bit and since it's for the font the font is selected and we hit calculate here it does give us a warning that the material thickness is only 0.8 thick and for a v-carve to get to full depth it actually needs to go to 1.6 so this would go through our material and down into our spoil board another 0.8 of an inch. I'll go ahead and hit calculate so you can see what this would look like. And what we can see here is the font going, being cut through and down into our spoil board, which we would have a mess down onto the board because you can see that it goes through. So when you're in the sign making and you want to still have a V edge like that, what you would do in here is you actually create a flat depth and you give it a flat depth of how deep it is that you want to go down in your material. I want to say go a half of an inch deep. So what I'm doing now is I'm restricting that V bit from going all the way down through my material and going to the point that it would need to fit that 60 degree down in there. I'm restricting it to a flat depth. Notice we haven't messed with the start depth yet. We'll show you what that is later, but I've given it a flat depth of 0.5. So I'll hit calculate there. And now if I reset the preview and preview that toolpath, you can see that I've restricted that font to go down to only a half of an inch. But what you can see down there is not a smooth edge. Uh, you have a little bit of discrepancy as far as uh, not having it smooth. And that's because you can't cut a perfectly flat bottom when you only have a tipped bit coming to a point. So back in the same toolpath, we we'll just go ahead and click use a flat area clearance tool and we select a second tool which will come in here and we'll just use an eighth inch straight and when I hit calculate on this one, notice that it created a pocket toolpath first and then it goes and does the v-carve of the font. So we'll reset that, slow this down so you can see this. And as I preview those two tool paths, you can see it first does a end mill. You will do a tool change, and then there is your V bit, so it's still getting a V on the edge. So what we've done is we have now created a V carved tool path where it still has the V on the edge, but it has a flat bottom, one that's not going through the material, and two that also has a smooth edge. Let's look at the next one, which is V-carve logo, and we'll show you why we brought, broke up the two V-carves. Right now, by just doing a preview, you can see that the logo itself isn't very dark, doesn't show up with much depth, where the font shows up with a lot of depth. So a way to trick that in the software is actually go and give this a start depth. So this is why I created a second one for vCarve logo versus vCarve font, because the logo, I actually want the bit to start down inside the material. If I give it an eighth of an inch extra depth, start depth down in there, now again, make sure your bit is able to start that deep without breaking off. You might have to do this in multiple passes, but for on a big V60 like this, I give that that extra eighth of an inch start depth, and when I preview that tool path, it actually has more depth, and the logo itself stands out more. So creating two separate V-carve tool paths, one for the font and one for the logo, I'm able to go ahead and make this one a little bit custom with the start depth, giving that an eighth of an inch, which makes this pop out more, match more of the font. 
and have the VCAR font where we earlier added the flat depth. So in this first sample, we wanted to look at V carving, both in text, which is your font, and in a logo where everything is carved down into the material. All right, for this next example, we're going to actually go out and look on the shop bot and see this cut, and then we'll come back to the file itself. So here we are with the ShopBot desktop. We have a piece of three-quarter inch red oak. And you can see that there's an X marks the spot. And this is where we'll do the different bit changes. There's four different bits for this sign. And to ensure that all of them line up with the different cut depths, we zero the Z in the exact same spot. And you know the reason, again, it's in the bottom left corner is, well, look, we're cutting all the middle away. And notice, too, the difference between a climb and a conventional cut here, where one way is a nice smooth cut going right to left, and then when you go left to right, you see more of a blowout there. So we will look back in the Vectric software where you can change it to be a climb or a conventional cut. And you'll want to do that, especially on the last pass that goes around, so you have a nice clean edge. Here we are switching bits. We're back over to the X. We now have a ball nose in, and this is what bit we use for doing the 3D carvings, which we'll show again when we go back into the file where we drag, drop, and resize the 3D carving of our choice to put into our sign. And this is just showing the progress as it's going through. There is a left and a right 3D sign on this, showing you the detail. Again, this is an eighth inch ball nose in this example. And this is a 3D clip art of a white-tailed deer. And here is the same image on the right side of the sign, but this has been mirrored horizontally, so you have a left and a right side. And here's a close-up where you can see the detail that you're getting with an eighth-inch bit. And this is where you would decide if you're going to use an eighth-inch or a sixteenth-inch, what detail it is that you need for that job. And an eighth-inch was sufficient. Now we switch to a V90. This is our V bit for when we do the V carving of the text. So now that we're three bits in, if I were to have zeroed my Z out in the middle, I would have carved away all that material and I wouldn't have been able to get an accurate re-Zing of the zero axis. So that's why it was done down in that bottom left corner. And then the final bit that we will use on this is a quarter inch end mill. So we'll do one more bit change once the V carving finishes. So you have four different bits, all zeroed over in the same spot. So I can zero to the top of the material. That way I get accurate passes and alignments of my 3D carving and my text. And now I'm still successful when I go ahead and cut this out. Finishing is a whole other story. Again, and trainings and tutorials to come we will have ones that get into different methods and stuff for finishing techniques personally for me this is just a quick easy way to finish the sign and that's with using a sander using some wipe on poly and using some different stain colors so what we'll do in this video here is just look at the picture I stain down in whatever rough edges. Once the stain dries, I can just take that random orbital sander and blow that away. I paint down in there. I wipe away whatever was extra. That way I don't have to be perfectly careful from start to finish. And then using different color stains with different tip brushes. And this is where you get into a little bit more finesse work. And then finally at the end, once you get it the way you want with the different colors, again, if it's something interior, that Minwax Poly would work fine. This one here is gonna go outside. I'd use more of a spar urethane and, and get it ready for the outdoors. So uh, again, finishing techniques, switch back to the earlier slide that we showed you, which had the ShopBot forum. And you'll see on there several different people that are doing different techniques for different types of materials and different uh, finishes that they're looking for. Alright, to look at the file for this one, first I'll show you a little bit about creating it. I started out with a rectangle. Using the draw rectangles this is where you can add your corner type. Uh, I wanted to you know, add some arcs to it instead of having a straight edge. So what I went is I'm going to cut away everything but the uh, top left corner. 
Uh, using that top left corner, I was able to use the mirror option where you can mirror it around in four different ways. And that's where I got my four different sides. And then just use the final lead to come down here and do an offset, which allows you to offset in, give you a little bit of a border. Uh, for something like this, with the current version of VCarve, what you're able to do is find the clip art that you want. Uh, again, underneath the clip art tab down here to the bottom left, when you're ready to add clip art, you can just come down in here, grab the clip art it is that you're going to do. As you start building a library for doing different signs, you'll have lots of different clip arts that you use. And for this one here, this was just a matter of I found the one that I wanted for this example, and I was able to just grab it drag it and drop it and then within the software itself this is where you can resize it you can go back to using the drawing and aligning objects for moving it around you can also use the uh, horizontal mirroring so you can mirror it right to left or left to right uh, uh, resize and rotate so again this is all stuff I go back and watch some of the tutorials and play with uh, basic drawing but that's how I brought in clip art left and right mirror brought in text brought in the text and then when we get into the tool pathing side of it this is where a few options are new for when it's creating signs like this uh, what we have here the first tool path that was done was a pocket and this has a cut depth to 3 16 of an inch that pocket being calculated down in there you can see is a pocket which gives the depth and then that pocket is where the text and the 3d clip art is carved into so to, in order for you to get the text and the 3d clip art to show up into something that's already pocketed away that's where when you create your 3d toolpath finishing toolpath which here's my 3d deer um, someone would say this is where you would give this a cut depth, a start depth, I'm sorry, of whatever that pocket, what it is. You don't get that option in the finishing machine toolpath. You do get that in your text where you say, hey, I want a start depth of 0.1875. So if this was left at your 0.0, .0 for someone, just so you can see, see this, is not familiar with that, and I go, first there's my pocket that I did. And then I go, I want to see the text, preview my text. Well, you don't get to see the text because the text is just cutting air. I actually needed to give that a start depth of what my pocket was already carved down to be. And doing that, now it allows me to show the text that was in there. Now we go back to the clip art with the 3D finish and showed you that that option wasn't in there. And a lot of people call in and ask, where is that feature? How do I set my 3D carving down inside of a pocket? And that is actually up here in the material setup where you have set. And when you click on set here, you have model position in material. And this is where you can set your model position. And you notice that it is given a 0.1875 depth above the model. And that would match exactly to the pocket it was the first tool path of the point one eight seven five so now when I go in and I preview those first three you can see that it will pocket it out 3d carve in there with the ball nose and then we did that again the bit change to the V and that's how we were able to get those down at that depth of the pocket 0.8175 and then just to show you the final tool path is just a profile cutout that cuts out the sign, and um, I was just going to delete it, but I can't because it has the tabs in place, showing that the tabs are holding the scrap material to the finish sign. So unable to get the text and the 3D carving down inside of a pocketed sign like this, this is where within the V-carve itself, the V-carve option allows you, as well as these up here, along the top if you're doing another pocket or profile down in there you actually have a start depth when you're going to get into doing the 3d model the 3d model is set where the model is positioned in the material and that's up against the initial setup here so here's just another sign and another way of doing and bringing in parts for cnc signs so to give you a little background on the sign, the Horizon Forest products is where we get a lot of our materials from between our crating and our spoil boards and our different 
parts that we use on our shop bots. And they also have a finishing end of their company, and we made them several signs that they went ahead and finished. So we're looking at a piece of material here that's 32 inches by 24, three-quarter inch thick. So that's the job size that we have at hand. And what we have here are some of the techniques we've already looked at. We have our outside border. We have an inside, so it gives us a border edge, something pocketed down. But this time we have raised text. We also add a texture in this empty area instead of just a flat. And we've also gone went ahead and added in uh, a beveled edge. So if I was to turn on all the tool paths, there are a lot of things going on here. And there's some trick things that you need to look out for for your first and second time using some of these tool paths but when it gets into using your prism tool path and your texturing tool path. So there will be some tips and tricks throughout these next couple of examples. So the first one that we can see here is the pocket out a large surface that we have here you can notice that in my pocketing toolpath there's two different areas there's a clear and there's just your regular pocket of 0.25 so I'll click on that and what we'll show you here is this is just a pocketing toolpath that's a quarter inch deep and in order to get in between all of these letters with fine detail I need a small eighth of an inch bit well if I was to only use that small eighth of an inch bit to, to tool path this, that would take approximately five hours and 16 minutes because that little diameter to clear, to get into all that space would take a lot of time. So in our pocketing tool path, we're able to add in what we call a larger area clearance tool. And for this example, I had grabbed a half inch straight bit and using that half inch straight bit and calculating, now you can see with a bigger diameter bit, there's not as many passes going through there. And what it also did is it cut it down to approximately 22 minutes of the little eighth inch bit and a 25, in, 25 minutes with a bigger, larger bit. So what it does is it takes the larger bit, it goes in there and does the clearance. And turn on the solid here so you can see that big quarter inch bit I'm sorry the big half inch bit goes in there and gets everywhere that the eighth inch bit cannot fit so what is not purple here is where the half inch bit does not fit which also does not go up along the text itself so then when that gets done and you do a bit change this is where the little eighth inch bit that you had originally picked for the pocket comes in goes up along your text can get in between the different texts and is able to give you that precise cut that you want. Notice that an 8-inch bit still isn't going to get perfectly down into these corners. And what it's able to do, though, is go ahead and clearance this out with a clearance bit, half inch, 8-inch straight that gets you up against the edge. And that's what gives you your raised text. And notice, and here I go back in to turn these off so we can preview them and able to get raised text is again a pocket tool path and I have the text selected that I want raised and also by holding the shift key down select the vector that I wanted to pocket with so there's our quarter inch pocket with the text the vector that we wanted it to so once everything is pocketed out to our quarter of an inch we get th through cutting out on the shop bot with our eighth inch bit and our half inch bit this one's here is going to have lots of different bits by the time that we're done. So at the very end of this t example, we will look at tool pathing, saving with different names. So when I get done with the pocketing, the uh, next thing we'll look at is the prism tool path, which is where we put a beveled edge along all of the text. So for the prism tool path, I just has the text selected. And I go in here and I can go ahead and add in the start depth and prism depth that I wanted. For this example, I didn't need to set the prism to go full depth. I only set it to point 0.2. And to calculate and show you that, do you sure you want that to go? Yes, I do. And if I preview everything up until that point, what you can see is that's the example that I got with giving it a select depth of 0.2. 
point two. What it was doing in this message is saying a point three three eight would be the full all the way down. And do you want to continue? This was just a personal preference. I like to not have the prism go all the way down. I like to leave a flat edge along the side. It's just easier for finishing. When I when I get into painting, uh, have that nice sharp corner along the bottom there with a flat surface before it starts beveling in. Again, just a personal preference. But when you're getting into using any of these different tool paths and if it's your first time doing I would definitely check out the Vectric tutorials as far as f uh, getting in depth into each different tool path and using it to its fullest capabilities but this one here I just I gave it a 0.2 depth because I did wanted just a chamfer on the top and then a straight edge going down since we're now in the department of using this V90 bit since that's going to already be in our shop bot I figured to set a using any sort of a hand router or any other technique afterwards let's go ahead and also use a v90 to bevel all the way around the inside and the outside of our sign edge which on this one here is just a profile tool path with a cut depth of 0.2 just going down about halfway down the width of my 90 degree bit and I did give it a little bit of an allowance offset and the reason for that is so that tip of that bit isn't riding directly up against the edge and you'd see that here in the preview uh, where if we were to go ahead and run everything ahead of this bit and which is what we have here and now I do the bevel giving it that allowance offset allows me to put that V around the edge and that tip of that V isn't going to be exactly right up against where the through cut is because if that was you have you could have a little bit of machine marks so that beveled edge puts a nice beveled edge on the inside and the outside of our outer border uh, and then finally one more cut before we cut this thing out and that's with the texture cut the texture toolpath again I would definitely if you're just first time ever using some of these toolpaths practice some of these bevels textures, prisms individually before you put them all together in a complicated sign like this and also watch the tutorials that Vectrix supplies for each one of these. But Texturing you get to be creative. I'll go in here and show you the setup. Use a half inch ball nose for this example. The start depth is quarter inch. The start depth again is because this is pocketed out a quarter of an inch so we need to start down inside the material that distance. And all of these options here are for you to change. Once you find a setting that you like, you're able to save it. There's also two defaults that come straight with the software. But you can find, say you had a, a set of 18 signs you had to do for a golf course. And you came up with a texture that had to go behind each number, 1 through 18. And you wanted that texture to be the same. So this would be where you could create one texture with all these different settings save that and then apply it to your different eight set 18 settings one thing I do like to point out though is this boundary offset vector is really important that you put in there at least the half the diameter of your bit and the reason for that is is it keeps your bit off the boundaries edge and I'll show you what happens if I left this at 0, 0.0 for my texture and hit calculate and preview this tool path you can see that that texture is actually going up tight against the previous vector so if I was to give this say a 0.25 or even a little bit more 0.27 so it's at least half of my bit and I texture that off from there and reset that and preview now you can see that it does stay enough away from my text and my edges that it doesn't cut into so that's where your boundary offset would be and here's where you play with if your angles you want a different angles or you want a different lengths again this is a matter of playing with this getting it the way you want and then saving this to be a texture that you could go back and use as defaults for different signs and we'll just go ahead and reset that preview it once more and there you can see it with the bevel and what you're going to see out here is what you're going to see on your machine if you're not liking the different depths or the strokes that the texture is giving. Again, it's just a matter of 
double clicking on the existing one and modifying it instead of keep opening up a new one and a new one and a new one. And then finally the last tool path on this one would be the cutout where is where you come in and add your tabs and your ramps and cut this out to the size that you want. But this sign here is showing you start depth. It's showing you the pockets with a larger area clearance tool. It's also showing you the prism tool path, whether you want it to go full prism down to the text or leave a little bit of a flat edge. Textures, remember with the texture to give it a boundary offset. And with all of these options, I play with them individually and test them on scrap pieces before you put all three of them together and make a sign. The last thing we need to look at now is we've got a pretty complicated set of bits. What's a way to save this in an order to get out to the machine and, and make sure we've got the right bit in for the right cut that we're about to go do? So when you get to saving something like this and you click on your save tool pass and you click on all of these, with the current ShopBot TC inch post processor, this allows you to save all these different tool paths and just do bit changes. So after you got done with your first cut, it would say is bit number six in and you would say no and you would change your bit. And for personally for me that gets a little confusing when you have this many bits and a lot of different tool paths going on. So what I like to do is save these in a series of steps and also name them in a way that is easy to find. So I'll bring over here, first I'm going to uncheck everything, and the first toolpath that I would save would be that first one, which is the clearance half inch straight. And let me bring over to you the folder, show you what I save them as. So when I'm, before I'm clicking save here, or when I'm sorry, when I'm clicking save and I'm naming it, I would name it first tool end mill half inch, so I know what it is. And then the second one here would be your pocket, 0.25, Second tool, end mill, is your 0.125, is your eighth inch, which if I hover over it, tells me what it is. It says it right there when I look at it. The third one is your third tool, V90, which covers those two. And then the fourth tool was your end mill quarter inch, which was the ball nose. And and then again, I just would have had to save now, just so you could see this. Save here as the fifth one, and I would just go into the horizon folder, and I just... I, I, I'm coming up with a way of saving it so I know what it is, or whoever your operator is going to be. Fifth tool dot end mill, and that one here we actually used for this last one was a quarter inch, so it would save it like that. Notice that we're staying away from using any special characters or spaces in the name because Windows can get a little bit fidgety with those type of file formats. So if you're going to use anything, use a period or a bottom score. Stay away from slashes, special characters, and spaces. So name these in a way that's going to be easy for you to follow through. Okay, the first bit I'm using is my end mill. The second one is the eighth inch, and, and then follow through. So some people will prefer to leave them all here saved as one and go through and do a bit change. Uh, a lot of people will like to save these individually like you just saw in that file folder. Either way it works, but what works best for you in this application is what you're going to want to do. We looked at a couple different examples today, showed you some different types of signs that can be made, and as you know in the world of sign making, there are hundreds of thousands of different types and formats of signs. The best thing that you can be doing is getting out on your software and your machine and practicing. And you're going to find what works best for you. But today we hope that these tips and tricks helped with this sign making tutorial. And between our website and the Vectric website on our forum and talking with other shop botters, I think you're going to find a lot of different resources for sign making. And come back for future trainings that we'll be doing and breaking down into more specifics. So thank you again for everyone showing up today. Hope you enjoyed this training and we will see you next time.